Every day, four and a half billion people eat food made from wheat. It's the biggest single source of food in the world. Nearly 100 billion US dollars worth of wheat is grown, bought, and sold every year. The amount of land given over to wheat production far outstrips the other major crops such as rice and corn. The US government's own figures show that global wheat production is increasing by 10 million tons per year. The wheat I grow comes from wheat that was grown by people thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And I don't feel that I have the right to violate that for the people who are going to come after me. It is impossible to overestimate the importance of wheat to so many people in so many different cultures. China, traditionally considered to be a rice-eating society, actually tops the global league tables of both wheat production and consumption. The thing I like the best is harvest time. And, and that harvest, that meat coming in, that, that, that quality product that I know is, is, is going to be utilized to feed people, um, this, is, this is what farming is about, because certainly there are better ways, easier ways to make a living. Wheat is an essential ingredient in hundreds of foodstuffs. Bread, pasta, couscous, noodles, cakes, cookies, pizza, even beer. But for most people, wheat simply means one thing, their daily bread. From the sliced white loaf to the bagel, from the chapati to the baguette, bread is one of life's essentials. Certainly bread through the ages has been the most staple part of our diet. In many countries, or in the vast majority, it's still a staple diet. And it's a very dangerous product to mess about with. Nations have fallen for the, this bad quality of the bread in the past. And uh, they've been built on the strength of it. Wheat is the world's oldest crop. Originally a wild grass from the Middle East, farmers have been cultivating wheat for more than 12,000 years. It was the ancient Egyptians who discovered that wheat flour makes the best bread. By the 20th century, industrial-scale bread baking was the norm in Western countries, but the recipe remained virtually unchanged. The first step in bread making is to prepare the flour by sifting and blending. The other ingredients such as sugar, yeast, shortening, milk, and salt are weighed or measured carefully according to set formulas. Today's modern wheat varieties, like the hard reds and whites grown in North America, are so productive that a family of four could live for 10 years off the bread harvested from one single acre. The ultimate super crop, wheat is so versatile it can grow in the blistering Australian sun or the snows of the Canadian prairies. The expertise needed to grow today's modern wheat varieties is the product of thousands of years of experience, breeding, and science. Wheat is like worldwide a very, you know, it's your daily bread, eh? This is, this is your crop that the whole world has been living on compared to say maybe rice in some parts of the world, but bread in, in, in this part of the world, in Europe especially, is a very important crop. We've been growing wheat for centuries, since the time of the pyramids, without Roundup and without chemicals and without commercial fertilizer, shall we say until the last uh, maybe 40, 50 years when most of this stuff came uh, into vogue. And, uh, you know, I think that we probably were growing just as good a yields and probably just as good a quality in all those years. You know, maybe a little more labor intensive, but uh, no, I don't think it's necessary at all. Between them, Canada and the United States grow nearly one-fifth of the world's wheat, second only to China. Half of the U.S. and three-quarters of the Canadian wheat harvest is shipped abroad. Europe, Japan, and Southeast Asia are the main export markets. If, for whatever reason, these countries stopped importing North American wheat, prices would plummet and already hard-pressed farmers would be squeezed even further. Basically, there will be a real problem in segregating GM wheat from non-GM wheat. So there will be many countries that will uh, shun away from all Canadian spring wheat if we introduce GM wheat into the country, you grow it commercially. 
In recent decades, European consumers have demanded a return to better made bread. They're willing to pay for top quality products made with the best ingredients. The craftsman baker, once threatened by mass production and industrialization, is making a comeback. We use the best quality flour. It has to come all the way from Canada, but that's by the way. And uh, we don't then need to put in soils, improvers, emulsifiers, antifungicidals, vinegars or anything else. Just make it as a simple product. If I want to make a traditional loaf like this, I do need the traditional flour or wheats from Canada. We take a very pragmatic view at the moment and the British consumer does not want a GM loaf and is not prepared to accept GM ingredients, therefore we won't have GM ingredients. So who would put at risk the wheat that billions depend on for their daily food? Who would jeopardize the livelihoods of thousands of North American wheat farmers? Who puts money before food and environmental safety? And who, against all the evidence to the contrary, is trying to convince farmers there's a market for genetically engineered wheat? Monsanto, that's who. Uh, I feel it's, it's absolutely incredibly uh, atrocious to see what's happening with companies like Monsanto. There's so many aspects of what's happening that point to the fact that they're, they're just doing this without any proper regard. And to me, that's as far as uh, corporate uh, stewardship would be concerned, you know, it's obviously not on the books for a company like Monsanto. They don't have any proper regard for their fellow man. Genetically engineered foods could pose problems for human health. Experts are concerned about the possibility of antibiotic resistance, the creation of toxins, and nutritional changes. In the case of GE wheat, health risks could potentially be far greater because of the vast number of people who eat it in their daily diet. I guess the, this question is still out. How good or how bad are they to our environment and to ourselves ingesting it? And I would hate to think that 20 years, 30 years down the line, we find out what it may be doing to the insects in our soil and, and the, the quality of the plant life and the quality of our uh, food that we're eating. It, it, like we would ha not be able to turn back then. It's there. It's basically putting the farmers between a rock and a hard place. We've got our exporters, our export customers who basically do not want uh, Roundup Ready Wheat and we have these large corporate entities that are doing all this genetic modification who want to force it down upon us and uh, we're the ones that'll pay the price. These huge greenhouse complexes in St. Louis, Missouri contain some of the most closely guarded secrets in the biotech industry. Monsanto has spent more than a decade and tens of millions of dollars developing Roundup Ready Wheat. The company is so proud of their product they won't disclose the location of field trials so secretive that they refuse to be interviewed about it for this film. Perhaps not so surprising, given the dubious track record of other GE crops like soybeans, corn, and canola. Once you bring in this wheat, or with, it, with a genetic modification, a gene genetically engineered wheat, it's there forever. I mean, there's no calling it back if there's something wrong with it, or if there's a problem with it. It's there forever, and there's no question that you can that you can keep it segregated from your regular varieties uh, because it can't be done. So the question is not whether or not you want to grow this particular variety, it's whether or not you want to be stuck with this forever. It might not be long before the genie is out of the bottle. Monsanto has recently filed for government approval to grow Roundup Ready wheat commercially in both the U.S. and Canada. If that approval is granted, genetically engineered wheat could be growing all over North America in just two or three years. There is a regular market in countries like the EU for their high quality wheat and uh, it's very likely we will lose those markets, particularly for organic wheat, for example, if in fact we introduce uh, GM products in, or GM wheat into this country. European consumers have already made their feelings felt about genetically engineered food. Millers, supermarkets, and food manufacturers recognize this and maintain a strict ban on any GM ingredients. But don't just take our word for it. Research from the Canadian Wheat Board shows that two-thirds of their customers reject genetically engineered wheat. For some specific varieties, the figure rises to 80 percent. 
Even the Canadian and U.S. markets themselves, traditionally in favor of GE food, won't buy it. Flour millers and food producers all over the world are queuing up to say no to GE wheat. Their message to Canadian and U.S. farmers is quite clear. If you grow Roundup-ready wheat, we'll go elsewhere for our supplies. It is critical customers perceive the bakery's bread as being GM-free. Personally, I don't think Roundup Ready offers a lot to consumers. GMO wheat will for sure be a market destructor. If you do grow genetically modified wheat, we will not be able to buy any of your wheat, neither the GM nor the conventional. Flour millers strongly doubt that GM wheat, or even conventional wheat that may contain GM wheat, will be acceptable to the Japanese market. The European milling industry will simply not buy one more kilo of US wheat at all if Roundup Ready wheat is commercialised. We will not do anything to erode consumer confidence. Give us Roundup Ready bread? I don't think so. You've got to hand it to Monsanto. Even in the face of such worldwide opposition, they're still trying to persuade farmers that Roundup Ready wheat is the way forward. The company's PR machine spins the line that they won't push GE wheat until they're sure the markets want it. But they don't sound too convincing. We acknowledge the trade is a vital component of North American agriculture. Wheat is a highly scrutinized crop because much of it ends up on grocery shelves in the form of bread products. We're never going to sell a seed of biotech grain until we know we have the demand. For organic farmers in North America, the introduction of Roundup Ready wheat would spell disaster. They're already reeling from contamination by other GE crops, notably canola, soya and corn. The tiniest trace of Roundup Ready wheat would be enough to make an organic miller or baker look for alternative supplies. Canada is seen as a very pristine supplier of product to the organic market. Uh, definitely one of the top suppliers in the world, especially for bread wheats. And for, you know, for us to jeopardize that relationship for something that uh, at this point in time is unregulated seems to be a bit of a travesty in my eyes. Uh, basically, organic market is one of, of uh, trust and reputation. And the people could, you know, the buyers could very simply move on to somebody else if they even suspected that, you know, potentially there might be a problem down the road. That's bad news for organic farmers in Canada who are worried about the effects of GE crops. Many are already facing major financial problems because of contamination from GE canola. The Saskatchewan Organic Directorate is suing Monsanto and fellow biotech giants Aventus for the loss of $14 million worth of organic canola. The lawsuit also claims that organic wheat exports, valued at $170 million, will be wiped out if Roundup Ready gets the go-ahead. It's, it doesn't take a whole lot of contamination from a neighboring farm to happen for the wheat that I'll be growing to be contaminated. And, and that's certainly something that is already being demonstrated uh, by canola. And there's obviously the threat only by the GE wheat uh, trial plots that are being grown across Western Canada. There's a possibility that some low-grade contamination is already happening out there. And it's not just organic farmers who will lose out if Roundup Ready wheat is grown commercially. Conventional wheat farmers are also worried. Something that, like seeds, are, really are the commons. They've been, they've been part of a, an exchange amongst farmers for, for a, a number of millennia. You know, the corporate world, their, their business strategy, they're appropriating that entire history of wheat and they're patenting it and they're taking possession of that. And this is, this is the commons. This is something that should be freely exchanged amongst farmers, amongst researchers. Monsanto primarily wants to introduce uh, transgenic GMOs into Montana. They first talked about doing it in 2003. Now they're talking about 2005. And uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, if we lose our export markets, and we know that Japan and the Philippines and Korea and uh, Egypt and the European Union that they've told us they don't want GM crops, especially GM wheat, and that will further depress prices. 
the economic situation in North Dakota right now is bleak without genetically modified wheat. If it's introduced prematurely, if it's introduced without certain safeguards in place, it will be a crushing, crushing blow to our economy. Of course, loss of export markets is only one problem farmers will have to face if genetically engineered wheat gets the go-ahead. Like other Monsanto crops, Roundup Ready wheat will bring a whole host of other problems with it. Already, farmers throughout North America are embroiled in lawsuits with Monsanto over GE soybeans, corn, and canola. Experts predict the consequences of GM wheat will be even worse. I do not believe that our, our, our handling system and storage system will be capable of keeping GM wheat and non-GM wheat separate. It cannot be done. There will be a problem, and who pays if farmers lose their export markets just because of admixtures that occur down the, down the stream of commerce. Uh, if the farmers do their best, they could still lose their export market. They could still have their wheat rejected. Farmers are used to fighting their own battles against drought, hard winters, disease, poverty, and bureaucracy. Now they're gearing up for what could be the biggest fight of all. It's not just about a new genetically engineered crop. It's not just about farmers being able to sow, harvest, and sell their own wheat without interference. It's about the right of all of us to eat good quality, uncontaminated food without worrying what might be in it. It's about the bread of life.